What's up everybody? Mad Scientist here. Of all things hip hop and wrestling. Now with this video here, I'm going to do an in the lab video. It's been a long time since I did one of these, but I finally came up with three topics that I really wanted to talk about. Um, and we're going to kick it off here right now with the first topic, and that is Ryback as a main eventer. Um, you know, people are kind of up in the air about what happened on Raw here last week with the ending of Raw. When Punk kicked uh, Mick Foley in the cannolis and then, you know, he turned around to go turn around to say something to Mick Foley as he was taking off and Ryback's just standing there just breathing heavily. Now it is rumored that if, I guess, John Cena is not able to go at Hell in the Cell or, you know, for whatever reason, um, they will have just possibly have CM Punk versus Ryback. It is not discussed as if it, you know, will be a, you know, for the title, it may just be a Hell in the Cell match. Who knows? But the question is, um, is Ryback ready for the main event and does it even matter? Because, I mean, Vince has a kind of a, how do you say it? He's kind of got a boner for these kind of guys. He's got, a, he's got a boner for these, you know, Ryback, Batista looking, John Cena type guys who are just big muscle bound freaks. And, you know, it's kind of hard to... To, to really put these guys in the ring with guys like The Miz and guys like Daniel Bryan and have the smaller guys get the wins legitimately and make it look, you know, make it look realistic other than if they pull the angle of, you know, guys like Daniel Bryan and The Miz are smarter and they, you know, cheap shot their way to the victory. So, with a guy like Ryback who just continues to win matches, he just squashes two, two guys at once or, you know, squashes The Miz who's the Intercontinental Champion, the main eventer of WrestleMania a couple years back. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. So, this guy's getting this monster, monster push, and it, and it looks like he may be headed to the main event scene to face guys like Punk. And, and, and the best thing that could come out of this, you know, in my opinion, you, they, they could just do it like, you know, have Ryback go in here, surprise Punk, and win, and maybe win the title, and it would be a big old surprise and really spark, you know, something different. But I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's too early to do that with, with, with a guy like Ryback. I think a good way to get Punk solidified even more is to have him beat Ryback. Who knows if it'll happen. Who knows if this match will even happen. But the way this guy is getting this push right now, you know, Vince has got this massive boner for him. I, I really can't say, you know, I don't think this, you know, I really don't think this guy is not going to be at that main event level here real soon. I think it's going to happen. Um, you know, at least he's more believable than a guy like Brodus Clay in the main event. Um, Ryback is, is a complete machine, and a lot of people feel like they're going to start running him like Goldberg. You know, Goldberg never talked or did anything. He just came out there, whooped ass, and left. Even though the idea is extremely unoriginal and, you know, kind of, you know, dated and annoying at, at times, fans seem to like the idea still of an undefeated streak of a guy who can just go out there squash people and then be done he's i've said this before him and guys like Bruce clay and guys like sin cara are feature or featured i guess feature wrestlers same thing well big show is kind of different now but like sin cara Brodus clay and ryback are feature wrestlers they go out there you know they're most likely going to win because they're never in feuds they go out there you know, do their cool thing. Rose Clay does his little dance moves and wins his match. Squash. Ryback goes out there and destroys dudes. That's for the entertainment. And then Sin Cara goes out there and does all his little flippy floppy moves. And then, you know, that's that. So, who knows? This could be interesting to see where they go with this, this whole Ryback angle with Punk maybe, possibly. Honestly, it's kind of fresh. And I and, and as bad as it sounds, some people would disagree. I kind of would like to see Punk versus Ryback in Hell in a Cell. I don't think the match would be that great, but I think it's going to be a complete train wreck, and I think it's going to be entertaining as hell to watch um, and really surprising and kind of might, might shock some fans. So I think that might be a good move. So right back to the main event. Who knows? I'd be entertained to see what they could do. It wouldn't hurt me or wouldn't really bother me as a wrestling fan to see him main event uh, with Punk at Hell in a Cell, but who knows? Next thing we're going to move on to here is um, Samoa Joe just won the... Um, the vacated TV title. They ended up making the TV title the actually the old um, TNA World title, which I thought was a good move, and giving it to Samoa Joe, a guy who, you know, consistently will be there on on a basis and be able to provide quality matches. 
I thought this was a great move for a guy like Joe who can work, who the crowd's behind, you know, giving him that other title. Um, I think I think this is a great movie. They haven't had like a mid card title other than maybe the X Division to really solidify, you know, a mid card scene or whatever. I think Joe could go out there, you know, and have great matches with almost anybody. It's it's you know he's one of those guys, and you know the fact that he is the TV champion means he's going to be defending the title on television. You're going to get to see more Samoa Joe for those Samoa Joe fans out there, like myself. Thumbs up. Can't wait for that. So great move there. Um, excited to see what they're going to do. Know they're going into Bound for Glory here very, very soon. Um, hopefully, he has, you know, gets in there with a, with a, you know, somebody he can work with, maybe an RVD or, you know, something like that. Maybe they lean towards Magnus. Who knows? But just the fact that they put a title on Joe, a singles title, is a great, great move in my opinion. I think, you know, and I think uh, Joe is a, a is a perfect example of of what that title needed to be because for a while it's just been stagnant. And I don't know why they threw the title on Devon. It was just pointless to me. Um, I would love to see Joe and, and Bully Ray. I think that would be really entertaining. Joe's got the crowd on his side. He's not really heel face. He kind of just, you know, plays himself. Yeah, but the fans are mostly behind him, so I guess he'd be a face. And then throw Bully Ray in there. I think that Bully Ray and Joe would be a great match at, at uh, the Battle for Glory if they decided to do that. So that's what I got there. Congrats on Joe, TV champ. Glad to see that. Can't wait to see what they're going to do with him with the title. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about here is um, I've noticed it. A lot of other fans have noticed it. And, um, you know, it's fi it finally needs to be said. It really does. And, and, you know, I'm not hating on the guy, but it's the truth. And I'm talking about Kevin Steen. Kevin Steen has been extremely disappointing as the Ring of Honor champion. Um, and it may not be his fault. It may be Ring of Honor and how they want to book him as the champion. But all the matches that he has, all the matches he's had, mostly, as other than the matches he's had, you know, recently, you know, a while back with Gen Generico, all his matches have all been brawling, like, street fight st type style matches. You know, when they, people talk about Kevin Steen as a wrestler, you think of, okay, this guy looks more like a wrestling fan, not a wrestler. And that's why a lot of people like him. He doesn't play no, you know, pull no punches. He says what he wants. I love Steen's character. I love, you know, him him looking like a wrestling fan. It, it, it you know, it it solidifies that wrestling fans, you know, sometimes make the best wrestlers. But over the last, you know, this whole this year of 2012, I've just been very disappointed with Kevin Steen as the Ring of Honor champion. Um, and everything he's done in the ring, like ring quality wise, what he does outside the ring is, is fantastic. On the microphone, getting you know the crowd to hate him and getting the crowd to love him and this and that. That's perfect. But having matches with the Rhino and then Eddie Kingston, you know, these guys are brawler type guys, you know, and then, you know, have, you know, Carino and, and, and Jacobs as the tag champions, and they're this faction called Scum, it just, eh, it just, it's just not working for me, and it's, I'm really disappointed with Kevin Steen, um, one of the reasons, and another big reason was, I've been thinking this for a while, and I just really never, didn't want to say it yet, because, you know, I just wasn't quite sure, I'm going to, you know, give Kevin Steen the, the benefit of the doubt. Um, Glory of Honor's coming up here. He's going to have a match with, with Michael Elgin. We're going to see how that rolls. Um, last, you know, major ma you know match that Elgin had was against Davey Richards, and, you know, that ended up possibly, possibly being the best Ring of Honor match of the year, um, unless something bigger happens, or maybe even the match of the year, period. So you're looking at Elgin going into here to a main event with the champion at Glory of Honor. You know, I would expect great things out of this match. Um... And it also just looks like Steen's out of shape. He really doesn't care. You know, he knows he's just, he's the champion, and he's just not fighting for Ring of Honor to be Ring of Honor, to be the best wrestling, you know, out there. It's just not what it used to be. And him being a champion kind of portrays that. And it's kind of sad to say, but like I said, Kevin Steen as a champion, I've been disappointed. I don't know if you guys have been dis disappointed with Kevin Steen as a champion. Another th reason I, I brought this up is because... Uh, 411 Mania just did a an article called um, I think it was like the top eight um, overrated performers, and uh, a lot of the, the the people that they had on there I would completely agree with. And the hey, he, the guy who did it had Kevin Steen number one. It's his number one overrated performer, and I read his you know article, agreed with him completely, and everything you know, and that's what I've been thinking the whole time. And I just just the last several months I just never really brought it up because you know I like the guy so much. But you know it needs it needed to be said. Kevin Steen, 
just man, just just kind of disappointing right now as a champion. Um, it's not really how he acts or you know his character or anything. It's just how he you know how he's performing in the ring. Um, you know he looks kind of sloppy. He looks like he doesn't care what he's doing. You know he knows he's got the fans on his side, so it's not like he has to try or anything. That's what I really just am disappointed with. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. First wrestling video I've done in a long time on here. Wanted to do one. Uh, Copper Drop's coming here in the next couple days. Uh, I'm almost done with all the albums. So uh, if you're looking forward to a Copper Drop for September, check that out. I'm the mad scientist of all things wrestling and hip-hop. I'm going to get out of here. Deuces.